This is a case of a peel arterio venous fistula within the sylvian fissure. A 22 year old right handed lady initially presented with otalgia. Uncareful history taking was found to have an associated right uh, pulsatile tinnitus. She had no past medical history and no neurological deficits on examination with normal hearing. This led to an MRI scan which shows here this dilated uh, venous varix which indicates an arteriovenous anomaly within the right sylvian fissure. A right ICA injection shows fast arteriovenous shunting from the middle cerebral artery into the venous pharynx and eventually into the inferior petrosal sinus. We can just about make out the zone of arteriovenous fistulation here, but our interventional neuroradiology colleagues uh, did not feel that they could confidently embolize this and safely preserve flow into the middle cerebral artery distally. These are very rare lesions characterized by a single or multiple arteries feeding directly into a vein. There are no dural arteries involved and in the area that's highlighted is characterized by a peel branch uh, anastomosing with the vein. We can still apply the conyard grading system of dural arteriovenous fistulae uh, in order to grade peel AVFs. Given that there is an ectatic vein and direct feeding into a vein, this would be a grade 4 lesion with quite a high risk of overall hemorrhage, an annual risk of 8.1% with a combined annual mortality rate of 10.4%. Therefore there is an intention to treat this. One of the options discussed was stereotactic radiosurgery which avoids the risks of open surgery However, there is a delay in its closure. As mentioned, the endovascular option was also considered. However, there was difficulty in identifying the exact fistulation point and some concern in injecting the substance and safely preserving flow in the distal MCA. Open microsurgery therefore allows us to explore the area and gives the best chance of an instant disconnection of the fistula. We do have to be mindful of the risk to life, uh, seizure risk, neurological deficit risk, as well as infection and cosmetic result. But on weighing things up, we felt this was the best option for achieving a cure. The surgery is carried out through a mini terional craniotomy, as shown. Prior to the craniotomy, a subperiosteal subfascial flap is reflected. And the temporalis is disturbed and retracted inferiorly to achieve bony exposure for the craniotomy. And this will be described in a separate video. The sylvian fissure has been opened laterally at the sylvian point, and we identify an M2 segment distally just beyond the genu. We now dive deeper into the fissure to expose the M1 segment proximally, and we expose the genu itself so we have a good segment of the MCA for proximal control exposed. Superficially now we identify the venous varix and dissect it free to expose the point of fistulation between the M2 MCA branch and the venous varix shown here. test this as the fistulation point with a clip then we run ICG video angiography showing the MCA filling up here and as we remove the clip we can see the venous varix filling uh, confirming our fistulation point. We now coagulate the fistula and divide it so it's now separated and we carry out our final ICG run, confirming disconnection of the arteriovenous fistula and good flow distally in the MCA. Postoperative angiography confirms disconnection of the fistula and no early venous drainage. The patient made a good neurological recovery without any neurological deficits. The otalgia 
end the tinnitus had completely resolved.